We are rolling. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome to the Pull Wax Podcast. My name is The Real Pullman, and I'm here with two special guests. One you've seen before, one you haven't on the podcast, but you might have seen him on television. Chris from Rippin' Wax. What's the deal? What's up, what's up, what's up, everybody? And we got Ty here. Ty, what's going on? What's going on, guys? Um, so, long story short, I really want to get into Ty for a, for a second. I want you to introduce yourself, and I want you to tell the people a little bit about your journey in sports cards. Okay, yeah. I'm Ty Dillon, NASCAR driver, and uh, just started collecting cards in December, so I'm kind of new into the game, but I've hit it really hard and <laughs> aggressive. You're saying December of, like, last year? This past yeah. So you've yeah. been in the hobby for seven months? Yes. Yeah, wow. Absolutely. Holy yeah. goddamn so, smokes. Fever. Um, you know, it that started out with an obsession with sports, and actually an obsession with, like, fantasy sports and regular sports kind of combining. And then I, you know, I've always signed cards for Panini as a driver. Never mm-hmm. really paid attention to them, but uh, I started realizing the card game, seeing more people talk about it online. And when I started re- reading into it and kind of seeing what I thought about it, it kind of married like the fantasy world and like the prospecting of different sports, which I enjoy so much already, into one, uh, and gave it something substantial to collect and had value in. And, and you can also tangible, kind of, physical, yeah, you, you can, can touch day, it. You can day trade the you value, or that. you could have long-term value, or just collect, you know, personal collect. So along with that, I, uh, we had just had our second child, our son, and uh, so I thought it'd be something cool that him and I could do, or even my daughter when she gets older. So, so um, an investment that's, standpoint. Yeah, yeah, so it's all there for me, like family-wise, and just a, a hobby that I enjoy. It's on sports. brand to your life. Like, Absolutely. It fits. Awesome. It, it fits. fits right perfect. And, and you like to have fun a little bit, too, yes. right? Being a NASCAR driver, a lot yeah. of adrenaline. Absolutely. Opening a box, a lot yeah. of adrenaline. There's, there's nothing more uh, exciting than opening up a box, <laughs> whether you get killed on it or you crush it. There's, uh, It's pretty cool. It's, the you risk get that risk same, reward factor, man. Get that same heart pump. It's about that dopamine, yeah, right? Just getting, right. It, getting it going. Yeah. But... Um, Dan Fleischman earlier was alluding to it. When you open up a box, you still get something. When you go to the casino, you don't get anything. Yeah. When you play a big fan duel, you don't get anything in yeah. return. Yeah. Even though the cards might be 50 bucks and you think you get crushed, yeah. you never know, right? Yeah, well, 50 that's what, bucks today. TJ yeah. Warren and during the bubble was selling. But yeah. that, listen, that's why so many people that when sports was off air, gamblers didn't have anything to gamble, right? Yeah. So sports cards created that new gambling for them and a lot of people didn't want to talk about the hobby as gambling i think we're all comfortable now it's a scratch off it's a lottery risk versus reward you can get some or you can't get anything at all and there's obviously bigger gambles with bigger payouts you know for sure but well scared money makes no money there's people now that were sports gamblers there's people now that were sports gamblers that no longer are Gambling on sports. Correct. Because they got the fever of sports cards. 100%. They like the idea of taking home a tangible item, but they also like the idea that the card is raw and that we go through a process of grading cards to up the value of cards to increase the ROI. So it becomes a money, wealth, investment, everything wrapped in one, and it's got a whole bunch of pros, and that's why you see a lot of people that were gamblers no longer gambling anymore. They now are in the sports cars, 100%. full time. Literally. I know them. And it's 24 seven when you're taking a bet, the game's at seven o'clock to 10 o'clock or whatever it is, you always have to be on the time of the game. But now all breakers are on your time because they're live 24 seven. And you can buy anything at any time, at any moment, whenever you want. So obviously that right there completely changes the entire stratosphere for for for, for breaking it, it, and for, for wax. So it's like what we're really gonna talk about now, whatnot. Whatnot is QVC on steroids for sports cards. Correct. And you can basically get on there at any given time, at any hour, you could wake up and get sports cards. Like yeah. he could be literally getting ready to go jump in the NASCAR, but he can have an itch to rip sports cards and hop on rip and wax or pull wax real quick and rip some cards. I mean, is that not crazy? So those of you that don't know, obviously all of our podcasts are sponsored by Whatnot. You guys know we talk about Whatnot all the time, but those of you who don't know, Whatnot is a revolutionary application that allows you to buy or sell sports cards at any given moment on live stream. The reason why Whatnot is so great for breakers like pull wax and rip and wax is the fact that there's no payment processors involved. It's seamless. So PayPal shutting you down, Shopify is giving you problems. They're holding your money. 
They're doing all these things. The logistics aspect, creating the shipping labels, the whole nine, it creates time for the breaker because all the time that you would take inputting the information. Like people don't realize how much still, I mean you talk about this all the time, how much time goes into breaking. You'll never but what understand about when they change their Instagram handles it. and before, like in the past, right? This guy breaks X three, four cards. You go DM him after your stream. Hey, what's your address? He already changed his IG. How are you going to find him? Yeah, stuff like that happens all the time where the guy who never <laughs> messages you the address, <laughs> but two months later, you're the guy that held the... Listen, there's a lot of work that goes into the sports cards. It's... Look, right now we're at Nationals 2021. Did any of you guys think that this is what gonna this is what it was gonna be like here? This is unfathomable. I'm this is like, crazy. Yeah, I've never been to one, but this is uh, I've been to a lot of shows and a lot of different things and this is in different the, niches yeah, and different different, different things, yep. right? And car shows or racing shows, yeah. auto shows. And this is the buzz is higher, there's more people, the How's the, the event, energy here? The energy's insane. I mean you there's little and maybe you were one of them. People running around the floor <laughs> just right. a few minutes ago. I was, I was running really, to buy, get a NASCAR box, dude. I wanted to People are literally really running it. around the floor with excitement. And this is a what, eyes five, like day, this. five like, day event. And you're <laughs> three or four days into it. We like, love it. We live it. The buzz is insane. It's really cool. And it's fun just to be part of something with energy to it, especially this, in this day and age. And also, it's crazy because, as you said, you've been in the hobby for about seven months. And there's so much information, right? Yeah, uh, Research and development was whoa. one of the things that took me a while to actually like you know without like i probably spent like fifty thousand dollars and you know months what about the and hours, hours, and hours ripping but at bullpen, ripping at other shops like just trying to learn what is this yeah. what's a base card what's a silver what's a numbered card what's hobby what's first off the line what sets do i want what's a premium set yeah. what's a subset what's an yeah, insert i had to teach myself like, a lot that game back into the like hobby there's again. inserts people say inserts suck right yeah. kabooms are an insert yeah, yeah. color blasts well, are an insert yeah. you know you know it's like Absolutely. When I was collecting, actually, I met Ty. Ty came in my room through Instagram. Yep. At first, I remember he came in. They were like, oh, there's a blue check mark in your room. <laughs> I was like, blue check mark? Okay. The next thing you know, it's Ty Dillon, the NASCAR driver. <laughs> and then, like, that night went on, and he ripped at me, and I didn't even really process it. It's and the next to. day, it's I'm like, to. Ty Dillon. Well, you know what it is? You know what it is? I know, when, I know when it clicked. When you put the shipping label on the, yeah. on the package. <laughs> and like, then I'm oh, like, shit, I got I, I to yeah, get him back I, to my room. Can I hand deliver this? Yeah. <laughs> So he came to my room, he was ripping, and dude, he brought his brother in my room. It's been awesome. He asked me stuff. I helped him as much as possible. But I like to say that, like, I like to say that he came to a room that he found a good breaker because I I put a lot into this, and so does Mike. Shut it down. <laughs> yeah. My intentions are whole. I push the hobby. I love sports cars. I think that shows. And it was just like when he first asked me, I. It, it, Anybody, I go over that way for anybody. I go over the edge, I'm that type of guy. But anybody who messaged me in the DM, yeah. you know, I treated him the same way I treated anybody else, yeah. dude. And it just happened that he reciprocated back to me. He kept coming to my room and this is where we are today. It's the first time meeting him. But the thing is, is you put a face to people because of FaceTime, because of exchanging phone numbers. Creating because, content, and the hours it, of that, like that shit is all very important. going live like with I me, see Ty has a, a videographer with yeah. him right now. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like it's very important to, to do that. I want to talk to you about, you know, Whatnot is the mecca for sellers. Every seller wants to be on Whatnot. There's no arguing that, denying it. Right I, now. Yeah, I sell a lot on. of cards. Yeah. I don't necessarily need another, you know, I was always doing it on my own, but when I realized and when I actually put it to test, Whatnot works for our model, yeah. you know, it's a proven fact for sellers that Whatnot is the move. Now, from a buyer's yeah, perspective, yeah. right? Imagine you were breaking on Instagram back yep. in December, imagine go back and go on Instagram, then go back into PayPal, then go to check yeah. in, Compared then security to, check. Now yeah. you're already missing him ripping the box. Yep. Can you talk about yeah. the streamlined process for whatnot and why is it so much better from a from a yeah, consumer and from a standpoint? Yeah, ripper from a, standpoint. Yeah, from a yep. yeah standpoint. absolutely. And I think, you know, it's almost works in reverse, right? So all the all the rippers want to be on whatnot now because I think the reason why is because the consumer, the buyer, it's the functionality is so easy and it's fun, right? You got the the auction feel. You yeah. got that you can go right there at the bottom on the tag and see what see what's for sale. Your tonight, payment right? information is stored. Yep. You don't anything, gotta, anything the, that, in is the is room. That the, is that the easiest thing? The payment easy, the payment is there. It, it's it's, it's too own. easy. <laughs> you know, like, you go to PayPal. Yeah. Oh, here you go. Yeah. You gotta go to sell. You gotta go to Venmo. Am I missing it? Is this a good buy? Is this the chase? Sir, like so even like even my wife will sit there with me sometimes and watch and if it's an auction like just the 
auctions are fun to watch yeah. just yeah, as yeah, is yeah. no Even matter what selling yeah whatever, whatever it is, is. especially just, when we started juicing, yeah, when juicing it. like it's fun right so like it's easy for the buyer which makes it easier for the seller and then there's functionalities on both sides that are just so well thought of that are married so perfectly for this hobby yeah um I don't think. Well, you, the app you know, was built for us. Yeah. So the difference. And even is in it, seven seven months or the last two or three months that you've been on, was it been three or four months? Probably. It's been so we're going into the fourth month now, yeah. man. On whatnot. It and it like and it years, has right? and it feels it's like been an amazing ride. Dude. The more amazing. guys like you guys have been on there and given your input, it's just gotten smoother. So yeah. the apps just and they're obviously listening. They're working hand in hand with you guys. It's just yeah, getting better. They're, they're, shout so, out to Ma yeah. for a second. Yeah, shout out to Ma. Ma is the guy to make sure that all sellers are good. He knows every seller's slang. Yeah. He's the yeah. biggest he's the one, fan of all of us. us yeah. He wants yeah. all of us to sell so much. Like he's more worried about my sales than I am. Yeah, yeah he wants that's to great. He's like, well. yo, you did great, well, but you have to fix this. And I was like, I wasn't even thinking <laughs> so that. So think about it this way How are you quick. watching all of this? How Do about you this? sleep? He has a kid and a family. <laughs> Watch how I relate this. In a car, in a NASCAR, they have to tweak his car for every race. Mm -hmm. And it's by like the yeah. tiniest little specs, Absolutely. Yep. okay? Because that can give you that much more speed on a racetrack. It can give you that much more horsepower. Well, the same thing. I just lost my track of mine. Um, no, you got it. I know it. where you're I'm going. On, I'm on where you're saying. It applies, you're saying it, it applies to the saying that all the minor app. tweaks and yes. everything will yeah. cause an easier race yeah. for us to win the race. Yeah. Right? Yeah. If we tweak our, you so, know. Okay, so the app. Okay, so let me go, let me start that over again. So I like Insta where you're going. Instagram, that was all right, here. So Instagram is a platform that we chose. Yep. So now we have a platform, whatnot, now that can make those tweaks and those adjustments. Because yeah. Instagram yeah, isn't you made for, for the drivers. Instagram yeah. isn't made for a breaker. No. So now what we have. Is made for a breaker. We have our cars. Now we have this. Correct. Now whatnot's there to be our mechanics. For sure. Them. We so couldn't have knows. any mechanics. Yeah. Instagram wouldn't even met, uh, no. answer us. No. Nope. Instagram doesn't care. They don't need that. No. That's not. We appreciate your Instagram. Without you guys, we would not be where we are today. Don't take that as disrespect. <laughs> I'm just saying. But whatnot. I rather drive. Whatnot's car breakers. right now. Um, so those are the uh, the pros and cons. I, I don't really know many cons about whatnot. Obviously, whatever cons there might be, they're definitely fixing every day. I went to the office. I saw their developers. They have an incredible team that are constantly on it, driven to make sure that this app is going to succeed. It's awesome. So Absolutely. that's it. And shout out to obviously all the breakers. And what's really cool to me is to see the celebrities the athletes coming on right we have Ty well, Dillon here, from NASCAR they, right then we have a great friend of mine Jason Demers who plays who's a defenseman on the Coyotes nice. making his whatnot debut August 5th awesome. you saw Blake Martinez yep. on whatnot you saw Jersey Tyree Kill on whatnot yep. like this Cheetah. I'm, I'm working on getting Kelly Olynyk right now are you so, yeah, oh yeah. wow so, Olynyk yeah so you know I, we so he, was, brought, he was actually brought here tell him about Com C tell him how yeah ahead. yeah so I was brought here with Com C and okay. I I met them through racing and different things, so different avenues with cards. And uh, yeah, I was actually breaking with them earlier and pulled a uh, on card out Herbert of 10. out of 10. Herbert. Uh, contenders clear gold for them. So uh, it's going to be, yeah, it's actually, auction yeah. Off and give away. It's, they're going to awesome. auction off. You got to go scan your, oh, wow. your phone on their Shout booth. Out to yeah, yeah, so yeah. they're doing things. And I think, I think the whole industry is going to figure out ways to get more athletes, more celebrities involved, which is just going to strengthen everything for everybody. And a uh, rising tide raises all we ships, and everybody has to see that. We are 30% into where we're going. Yeah. People think that, you know, listen, anytime anybody loses again, they're going to be upset and say whatever right it is. Right away. The yeah. hobby is going nowhere. The brand partnerships have not been activated. The marketplaces have not been activated. The merchandise, the branding, you don't understand that oh, look this, at the branding. Look at how some of us guys take it today. This will be, mark my words, sports cards will take over all of the poker, all the stuff you see on television, it's just that much more yeah, entertaining. It will be. No, not to poker. We're going there. Yeah. But that is going to be the future of sports cards. And I hope you clip this and in five years we'll do some Gary Vee-esque type of content about this moment. Absolutely. It will be on Versus. It will be on different channels. It is too entertaining. Yeah, it is How so are you not going to want to watch a case break of the hottest new National Treasures product where LaMelo Ball's autograph might be in there and that yeah. card might be 250000 Yeah. That's You're not crazy. Watch yeah, that? Absolutely. And absolutely. when you have I do it right now. Listen, if, <laughs> if video games could come this far 
in that short period of time. You can't tell me that sports cards, and people like to relate the sports car market back to the sneaker market. I own the sneaker store at 23. You own the sneaker at store at a young age. <laughs> 20, I'm 38 20, years old I, now. I did it at 21. I so I was 23. 21. So that's crazy. Sports cards is the taking over that and, was and dwarfing. We went to college. That was our college. It's dwarfing. College. Yeah, absolutely. Right? Well, YouTube too. <laughs> YouTube University. If you're not on YouTube learning something, you're doing it all wrong. But sports cards is dwarfing sneakers. It's dwarfing right. the sneaker market. And by the way, from a sneak seller standpoint, sneakers, and from a consumer standpoint, sneakers rot and uh, disintegrate. Sports cards don't. <laughs> also, like, how many Easy Red Octobers can someone buy? I've never heard someone say, "I don't want more prison." Yeah. You know what I mean? Um, so really, that's that. I think that another really important aspect is, you know, I don't want to toot your horn too much, but I got to give credit where credit's due. It's breakers like you that make someone be able to watch something for that many hours. Like, dude, the product is great and the product's fun, yeah. but it's a little bit more than just the product. Yeah. The product sells for itself, don't get me wrong, but only for a certain time. Yeah. This guy will have streams for 16 hours. Entertainment 15 and hours. education. Entertainment, think, like the way Polwax is, is, is branches, value, information, entertainment. You give the yep. value on the cards, you inform them through the podcast, you entertain them through everything. E education, yep. you it's got to do everything and that is why, you know, when you say dwarfing, the industry's dwarfing, back in the day, there wasn't these type of people in no, the well, hobby. This, well, this is the it was wild, a transition. wild right now. This yeah. is an unregulated industry oh, yeah. right now. So we are now, mo us, even him being a ripper and coming in, who knows, maybe he gets involved in this space. We are molding this space to what it will be. Yep. We laid a new foundation. These are the new pillars that are going to allow us to stack brick by brick level yeah. by level yeah, sure. you know and listen we're all like kind of freestyling it too you know yeah, like of course. at first when i was ripping I, there were, i didn't see anybody screaming like everybody was no, like, we, opening. We brought and the then i started Scott. doing all that and, and then i'm like wait like this is too much everybody's screaming like yeah. i don't even want to do that anymore and i transition and like yeah. well, dude it's all you're all just throwing shit at the wall until something sticks we're yeah. all having you fun find your lane we're just like, having you're gonna fun have an dude to like we're having lane. fun i don't yeah. care like people think all these things or whatever it is dude i'm who i am and I'm oh, not worried you know, you about it. You said a good word there, audience. And like, I never looked at it like that, but like, we build a following, dude. Yeah. And like, as a NASCAR athlete himself, he has a huge following. One of the first things I said to him was when I met him over there, does anybody know you? Anybody see you? And he said, not so much. And I was thinking for him a second, well, like, you know, I, it also comes back to like where you're seen as much. So, like, let's be real right now. Dude, some of us breakers are like all over the place yeah. now. We're like some mini celebrities. And Mikey, yeah, I know at times you're like, you get back and you're like, holy shit, dude. Like, so many people come say, look, yeah. little kids want to take pictures. And it's like, that's, that's my favorite. Crazy, like, at the dude. end of the day, it's, it's awesome. all about dude, the kids. And you know that. Yeah. The kids run the industry. At the end of the day, yeah. there is parents out there. Yeah. Well, that 15 year old or 10 year old is going to become in 20, 30 years. He, he's going to make money and he's going to want to put He's already put making yeah. money now. I'm yeah, giving kids free packs. They're going hey, to the next boot to sell them. Hey, yeah. you're a genius. How many times does a father message you, hey, I want you to teach my son this? I want him to understand business. Yeah. They want them to learn the business. Side. Yeah, it's good. At a young age. Yeah. So that's that time, man. I really appreciate yeah. your time, Thanks, dude. Like, Thanks, really, guys. seriously. Yeah. Chris, obviously, Absolutely. always a Thank pleasure, you. bro. Ty, Rip and wax, Ty Dillon. Band, We're way. gonna dude. see how Ty. He's always in my room hitting big cards. <laughs> We're gonna see He's how Ty. He's got something for sale. Hit him up, fellas. <laughs> We're gonna definitely figure out to get you on the business side too. Like, I really appreciate. Yeah. Like, I mean, we just met literally ten minutes yeah. ago, but I really Come like the, the way that you know. I like the way that you handle yourself, and I love like what industry you're in. I have yeah. a lot of friends in MLB, NHL, NFL, NBA, no NASCAR. When are you so back in the car next? Uh, looking at Indianapolis, um, trying to put together some funding for it, but either there or Michigan. So within the next month, I'm going to be back racing on the track awesome. in and uh, talking about three different teams right now before uh, three different going teams back to join for next year. Full, full time? time? Yep. Wow, awesome. awesome, dude. Ty Dillon's yeah. not going to be gotta breaking anymore. A, we got to get to a NASCAR race. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We got to go. Appreciate it, guys. Go. That's a wrap for today. Much love. Awesome. We'll talk soon. Much love. Right. Thank you.